Welcome to a recording of the online training session presented by Central Lake Ontario Conservation, known as CLOCA. My name is Patricia Lowe, and on behalf of CLOCA, I will be providing you with an overview of the Conservation Area Trail Stewardship Program, affectionately known as CATS. I will be presenting a dozen or so slides, and we encourage you to jot down any questions you may have and share them with us at our upcoming on-site training sessions. COCA initiated the Conservation Area Trail Stewardship CATS program in 2019 when we trained our first group of volunteers, 11 altogether, and they were to help us at Lynn Shores Conservation Area with a number of challenges we were experiencing at this busy location. The program was intended to provide an opportunity for individuals who enjoy nature and our conservation areas to participate in maintaining the overall quality of our trails and educating our visitors. Little did we know that when we completed their online and on-site training and launched them into the Shores Conservation Area in January 2020, that we would come to a grinding halt just two months later. We had tremendous momentum and very positive feedback from both our operations staff and our visitors. Needless to say, they were so disappointed, as were we, but patiently we have waited, grown the program almost tenfold, and expanded it now to all of our conservation areas here in September 2021. The program has been the envy of many of other conservation authorities who, like us, operate conservation areas across the province. Central Lake Ontario Conservation is a local community-based environmental organization and one of 36 conservation authorities responsible for managing watershed resources across Ontario. We were established in 1958 and our COCA's and COCA's jurisdiction is based on the watershed boundaries of four major watercourses and 18 minor watercourses draining an area of over 639 square kilometers. Our watershed stretches, as you see in the map from the municipal boundaries of Ajax and Pickering, in the west, over to Clarington in the east, and north from Lake Ontario to the crest of the Oak Ridges Moraine. And a watershed is simply land that drains into a body of water. So each of these watersheds drains into a creek system, which eventually drains into Lake Ontario. We provide a wide variety of science-based watershed management programs and services delivered in partnership with our municipal partners, local landowners, environmental agencies, and all levels of government. Our municipal partners include the region of Durham, cities of Oshawa and Pickering, towns of Ajax and Whitby, municipality of Clarington and townships of Scugog and Oxbridge. This is a conservation area overview. Polka owns, manages and operates public use infrastructure at eight publicly accessible conservation areas across our watershed jurisdiction. We own about 2,700 hectares of sensitive land, and that land offers unique water and land resources, contributing significantly to terrestrial and aquatic habitat and protecting water quantity and quality across our jurisdiction. Those green blocks represent our conservation areas. Eight of these areas are open to the public daily from dawn to dusk, providing 50 kilometers of diverse trails for hiking, biking, snowshoeing, and skiing. The length of these trails varies from 300 meters to 3.7 kilometers, averaging about 1.5 kilometers. Not all trails allow all activities and are signed accordingly. Some of our trails meet AODA standards to make our conservation areas inclusive of all abilities. Local operations staff routinely plan, budget, and complete improvements to our trail and public use infrastructure like washrooms, and, and building facilities for indoor activities. They provide inspection of trails and any maintenance as required, and they follow the conservation area inspection policy. The challenge is they only have time to visit each of our trails four times a year. Visitorship and trail usage in our conservation areas continues to grow, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. This has resulted in a number of challenges around management and infrastructure needs, such as litter cleanup, trail maintenance, education, outreach, and enforcement. 
Hoka is fortunate to have many dedicated community volunteers who provide an important support function for many of our core programs and services. We think the strength of our volunteer opportunities over the seasons of a typical year offer a great opportunity for things like social interaction with peers and other like-minded people in an outdoor setting. Many people welcome the opportunity to give back to their local community, especially doing something unique that they would not get to do otherwise. Many people participate in our annual tree planting programs or construct, maintain, or even monitor a variety of habitat enhancement projects, things like bird boxes and our uh, bee hotel at Enniskillen Conservation Area. A lot of our volunteers are high school students and volunteer to obtain mandatory community service hours to graduate. Our Purple Woods Maple Syrup Festival requires about 25 volunteers per day for 13 days to create a welcoming and enjoyable experience for our more than 8,000 visitors. We certainly couldn't do that festival without their support. A number of our programs are designed as a group or family activity to encourage that social interaction we mentioned earlier. One of the programs we love is repairing fences on the Chickadee Trail at Lynn Shores Conservation Area, as pictured in this slide. There's a link on um, this slide as well to connect you to our variety of volunteer programs if you are so interested. The Cloak of Volunteer programs contribute to improving the physical and mental health of our volunteers because they tell us they feel so good after an event, and we do too. Connecting with nature is the ticket for volunteers to develop an environmental ethic. When they pull invasive garlic mustard at Purple Woods Conservation Area, for example, then hang out in the kitchen with a local chef making garlic mustard pesto and pizza and a variety of other tantalizing treats, the commitment becomes second nature. By learning about the environment, the challenges and the steps we can all make toward improving the health of our planet in our own backyard, it helps to create a stronger environmental community. Our volunteers range in age from one to 92. The CATS program relaunch funding has come from an organization called Unsmoke Canada Cleanups. It was a grant that we, we wrote a proposal for and we're, um, we're glad or we're excited that we were able to receive the funding to support uh, purchasing a, a number of, of um, items to make your experience an enjoyable one. Obviously, we've had to modify the program somewhat and that the focus will be on trail cleanup and minor trail maintenance, less so on public engagement just because of COVID-19 and some of the limitations we know are, are, we are experiencing ourselves. So with support from the Unsmoke Canada, we were able to create 50 kits um, to support 50 CATS volunteers in maintaining our 50 kilometers of trails throughout, of our, throughout our conservation areas. The primary area of focus um, for the relaunch will be on the collection of cigarette butts. Even though smoking of any kind is prohibited in conservation areas, we still have a problem with cigarette butts. As part of the funding agreement with Unsmoke Canada, volunteers will collect cigarette butts separately we will provide the appropriate uh, collection um, equipment, uh, garbage pickers for each volunteer, and you will collect those cigarette butts, uh, store them separately, and we will send them to a company called TerraCycle where they will be re recycled into plastic pellets, which can then be used to manufacture a variety of products like shipping pellets and park benches. Our intent with this program is to focus on continued prevention strategies to reduce the impacts of smoking in our conservation areas. We are working on some portable butt buckets for our guests in the future. There are certain commitment and expectations associated with being a cat. So taking on the stewardship of a trail can be very rewarding and it's important that volunteers be provided with the training and resources required to ensure they are prepared to undertake the responsibilities. When you are accepted into the program, you will be required to complete a CATS training program that includes orientation, this pre-recorded online uh, presentation at about, um, estimated at about an hour of your time. You will then be required to complete our online health and safety training, which is about four hours, and a hands-on training 
session on site at your preferred conservation area, which um, will likely be about two hours. And it will be related hands-on, give you the hands-on experience related to your volunteer responsibilities. So this training altogether represents a seven hour workday, which can be applied to your community service hours. All volunteers are required to complete a vulnerable sector police check, which we will help you facilitate and fully reimburse you for the $20 cost. This is so that we can address any potential safety concerns that might require further support from FOCA staff. We have and do work with volunteers with a police record, but it is not deemed, but it needs to, it, it is not typically deemed a threat to our staff or visitors at our conservation areas. There is a saying we like, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forward. So we want to ensure we offer this program to a diverse audience and people that would benefit from the opportunity of giving back to their community. Volunteers need to commit to a minimum of one monthly, two to three hour visit to their specific conservation area for one year. Trail maintenance duties for now will vary based on the season, type of trail and habitat in which the trail is located. After each visit, volunteers will submit a report form to the program coordinator, which is Yvonne Storm, She's been reaching out to you with emails and, and answering your questions. If maintenance issues beyond the scope of the volunteer responsibilities are indicated, the report will be shared directly with our operations staff. Reporting forms will assist focus staff in effectively documenting, tracking, and communicating and responding to issues. COVID-19 screening will have to be completed prior to visiting a conservation area, so we will provide the necessary um, electronic files for that purpose. The cat's task will range from, um, a, from removing litter from everything from our parking area or on the trails and sometimes off the trails if it is safe to do so. As we mentioned, our focus for the relaunch will be on separating out the cigarette butts. We anticipate that that will not be a long term. Um, process unless we see value to uh, collecting them and, and putting them into the recycle program. So we'll have that, we'll do an evaluation. We'll, we'll have some conversations with you once we finish that program. At each conservation area, we'll, we will have designated litter locations for pickup by our operations staff. So they will be lockable storage boxes and you will place your cigarette butt packages or your litter bags or litter that is simply too big for the bag in the box and your report will indicate that there is litter there for pickup. Trail maintenance will consist of defining the trail edge, clearing small debris and branches, dismantling stick structures and we do get a lot of stick structures uh, constructed off trail and we want to ensure that those sticks remain on the ground uh, just from a health and safety and a ecosystem perspective. And we don't want people going off trail. So we want to make sure that those stick structures are not um, something that, that continues in our conservation areas. Your observations on the trails of good and bad activity will be key. And we will provide you with more details about that in the next slide. As COVID restrictions lift, we anticipate you will also have the opportunity to participate in things like fence repairs at Lynn Shores Conservation Area or invasive species manage for management at Purple Woods Conservation Area. So beyond the observing activity and reporting, we, we hope to move toward that in the future and, and have you engaged in some habitat management projects. The other thing that you will report um, and observe is not designed for you to address on site, but rather designed to capture and identify issues that are then shared with our operations staff. So vandalism can include things like tagging of building, campfires and destruction of trail infrastructure. Wildlife issues like dead or sick animals is not all that uncommon. However, at Lynn Shores Conservation Area, it seems to be a recurring problem with wildlife being dropped off. We do have species of concern, um, often um, species that, that um, 
during migration might land in one of our conservation areas. And because they're rare, they attract a lot of excitement from birders and photographers. Often um, they behave poorly because they want to get that photography, that, that photograph. And we want to discourage again, hopes being off trail and disrupting the wildlife that our conservation areas are there to protect. In the summer months, June to September, turtle nesting is another activity you may report on that references species of concern. We have turtle nesting protection structures in several conservation areas and, and June and September are key times. June is when the, the female turtles lay their eggs and September is the time of year that hatchings will emerge and return to their home wetland. Dogs off leash is a big one that needs to be addressed often with warnings and enforcement. Again, you are just reporting your observations. Our staff will look after the enforcement end of things if necessary. The public do like to make complaints and by default, you will be wearing a safety vest that identifies you as somebody that is connected to the conservation areas. So our um, recommendation is that you explain your role as a volunteer and that they should be taking their complaint to someone um, through either our main office phone, which is 905-579-0411, or an email at mail at coca.com. And we'll provide you with that contact information. So it's a quick reference. Cats observations and reports will also include hazard trees, and that's just simply trees leaning across a trail that may be a hazard to um, people using that trail. They might injure a trail user. Leaning trees off the trail, we typically leave and allow to fall or remain where they fall. And we will share some examples of those when we do our on-site training. We have expectations for our visitors and signage is clearly posted. Visitors off trail might be something you note in a report. Hazardous litter can include things like needles and sharks, and we'll have some orange safety cones in the lockbox for you to identify that location, and your report will direct our operations staff to address that issue. Illegal dumping is a challenge, more so during COVID. Um, this year, we collect, we average about six tons of waste per month from our properties. And given that they are often isolated or at dead end roads, it's, it does provide a, a great opportunity for illegal dumping and not having to pay the fees at our um, uh, transfer stations in Durham region. So again, reporting on where that waste is through your observations and reports is extremely helpful so that we can get that cleaned up rather quickly. Um, illegal parking. Many Many visitors refuse to pay for parking, so often get creative with their parking solutions to avoid payment. Um, not, put, not paying and not having a ticket in their dash is reason for us to um, issue some fine. Uh, other folks just do not park in the parking lot. They park along roadside right of ways where it is not appropriate to park. The challenge is that we need those parking fees to cover the cost of operating our conservation areas, which is um, a, a difficult message to, to uh, convey to many of our users. We do have to raise our own funds through these operations and external partnerships for making improvements like new trails, for example. So we do take illegal parking seriously and want to address the issue and, and stop that behavior. You will receive a CATS kit, and it is our intention to provide each of you with your own kit and some working knowledge of the contents. And we'll do that at the on-site orientation at your preferred conservation area. And basically these items will be given to you for your use when you decide. Um, and when you decide you no longer wish to be a CATS, they must be returned to us at our office during regular office hours. That way we can pass along to a future cat. We, we estimate the value of your kit to be about $100. So if we can um, clean it up and get it ready for another cat's volunteers, that, that would be our preference. Um, the garbage picker, bucket, bags, butt envelopes, doggy poo bags are pretty self-explanatory. Each of you will receive an Unsmoked Canada t-shirt to promote our funder, obviously. And this can be worn over clothing if weather is chilly. 
will also provide you with a COCA safety vest. It is a one size fits all and meant for all seasons to identify you as a COCA volunteer. You will receive a pair of work gloves, safety glasses, an emergency contact information card, a tick removal kit. Yes, we have ticks in our conservation areas, so we'll do some of that training when we're on site. You will also receive a parking pass for your chosen conservation area to display in your windshield when you are on site. And we'll also provide you with the code for the lock on the toolbox. And we'll tell you right now that that code will be 0411. Some additional information about the CATS program. So we will be sending out some dates for in-person training and that'll be distributed through a Doodle form. We're looking at weekends and some weekdays. We're looking at um, possibly uh, during the month of September, trying to finish up our uh, training for this, this round of CATS volunteers. We have a three strikes policy. So if we don't see any reports coming in after one month, or um, we'll check in and, and work with you. Perhaps you've been ill or been away, but after three months, we will request that all COCO equipment and parking pass be returned if you haven't submitted any reports in that time frame, and the parking pass will no longer be valid. Community service hours will be, um, we'll have a, a, a place on the reporting form where you can submit the hours and both the student and program coordinator will keep track that way. And, and we can certainly sign off on uh, paper documents. You can either scan those or send us an electronic copy. We can um, sign and, and fill out the information and send it back to you. We really want to encourage uh, picture taking and um, using those pictures on social media, on our social media channels. We would prefer if you didn't post photos on your social media channels, but please send photos as part of your reports. And just a guideline for uh, taking photos um, of people that you don't know. Um, just, uh, we try and take photos uh, at the back of people. We don't like to photograph faces. So if there's a group of people walking along the trail that you think would make a great shot to show um, how our conservation areas are being used, that's something for consideration. And again, we'll, we'll look at that at our on-site training sessions. There are a lot of helpful smartphone apps out there. Avenza is one for uh, locating yourself on our trail systems. iNaturalist helps you identify species in our conservation areas. There's a few others called Seek, Merlin, Merlin Bird ID, eBird, all kinds. And again, we'll, we'll um, share those with you at our on-site training and you can choose to download your preference or your preferred uh, apps on your smartphone. Perhaps you have some that you can share with us. Uh, we're always interested in, in learning more and, and having more tools in our toolbox to appreciate the natural world around us. We just have some FAQs to wrap up our um, online recorded session. Number one, can I volunteer for more than one conservation area? Well, the answer is no. The idea is for you to become familiar and comfortable with one CA rather than multiple CAs. You are more than welcome to visit other conservation areas, but we can only provide you with a parking pass for your preferred CA. We recommend after year one that you choose another conservation area if you like. It's completely up to you, but that'll give you a little bit of variety. Next question, how am I reimbursed for my police check? A um, police check letter will be provided to you via email from Yvonne Storm. You will complete this and take it to the Region of Durham Police Check Office at the, the Region of Durham headquarters in Whitby. And we'll provide you with details of that location and operating hours. You will pay the $20. And once we have your uh, police check certificate, we will reimburse you with a corporate check. $20. If I am under 18, do I need a police check? And the answer to that is no. But if you are under 18, you are required to have a uh, designated adult parent guardian neighbor um, attend your site visits to your preferred conservation area. 
and that individual will be required to uh, go through the police check process. How often can I visit? How often should I report? You can observe and visit the trails as many times as you like. Just please remember to submit a report after every visit. Even if it seems there is nothing to report, that is significant. Um, sometimes it tells us that the behavior that we are addressing with our CATS program is being effective. Just having a presence on site often changes our visitors' behavior. Taking only pictures and leaving only footprints, that is our ultimate goal when we, um, when we think about our conservation areas. And what we want is for our visitors to be less impactful when they visit so that our wildlife and the very natural um, elements that we're trying to protect in our conservation areas are not disrupted. So that is the end of our presentation. If you have questions, please again, make a note and bring them to our online training session. And we look forward to seeing you at our conservation areas on the trails very soon.